Hi, welcome to episode nine of this week's podcast. My name is Tracy and I'm your host. I am Tracy RR on Ravelry and I am Comfy Red Couch on Instagram. So I would like to start off by saying welcome to anybody new to the podcast and uh, I hope that you have a bit of time to sit down and that you'll enjoy what you're about to see and a huge welcome back to anybody who is returning. I'm glad that you've come back again. And uh, last week, if for people who t- who tuned in last week, um, I mentioned that uh, when I get to 100 subscribers, we would have a prize. And this is Cauldron of Colors Invictus by Sarah of Cauldron of Colors. And um, it's a, a beautiful merino and there's a cute little witch charm in here as well that goes with it and uh, so this will be the prize when we get to 100 100 subscribers so last week we were at 82 today we are at 97 so we're three away so um crossing fingers that maybe next week i can give details on this lovely prize so um but for now it's going into the basket until hopefully next week So, um, as I said, I am happy that you've come back. I hope that you have grabbed yourself a lovely cup of tea. Today I'm just drinking out of our plain everyday mugs and I have Coca Colada by David's Tea going. Um, Not quite sure how I'm feeling about it. Smells lovely. Um, I'm not a huge coconut fan, but uh, I decide I do like pina coladas though. Not getting caught in the rain. Not not so much that but uh, anyway um, I think it might be nicer as it chills so maybe as a, an iced tea it might be a really nice one so anyway get your cup of tea grab your knitting bag and come join me on the comfy red couch and we are going to talk a little bit about sewing and some knitting I'm going to talk a little bit about tea this week and I do have a true confessions for you at the end of the the podcast too so Take a few moments for yourself and let's begin. So this week, if you have been with me before, you will notice that I am wearing my McCall's dress and that's this one here. So um, I don't know that I need to stand up. (laughs) Um, So it's, it's a very sort of flowy dress. You can see I chose the cute little, they're going to blow out here, whoa, the cute little flower buttons. They're so cute. And just right up, I don't know, I like to wear them, but I like to wear it right down up. So I chose the flower buttons instead of the the blue ones that were, I think, a little bit too much with, too much pattern with an already too much pattern and and with this brightness. But um, I had some challenges along the way. I mean, this is my first project sewing like big sewing project in about 15 years so um uh, but I made it through so I'm really really excited to to share this so um wow Uh, and I'm starting to think about my next project which I did mention but uh just a couple things about this this is the McCall's 7565 I wish they had fun names because I'm trying I want to I love to name my knitting projects and so I'm not sure whether to call this my May dress or um, my living life dangerously dress. I don't know. (laughs) I've got to come up with a name I think but um, in the meantime it's my blue and green dress and uh, I love it. So anyway that was this pattern from McCall's. Now my next project it's been busy. I'm working full time. I'm working on some knitting projects and I'm working on a course as well. So these kind of things are slowing down my my wanting to sew. No, not slowing down my want to sew, slowing down my ability to sew at this moment. So my next project is going to be this Butterick Retro dress. I'm going to do it all in the one color with the piping and I did show this before. Um, This is my green polka dot dress. Well will be my green polka dot dress 
and um, I have come up with a name for this project and it's going to be called Not a Real Green Dress and um, because it's not pure green it's got the little beige polka dots so it's not gonna be a real green dress but it would be pretty close and um, and so the piping is also uh, that I'll be making is not piping um, the bias tape that goes around the, the edging will be in this sort of uh, champagne -y color so I uh, probably won't get to this for another couple of weeks and then I'm going to try and do what I did last time to sort of set goals for myself um, that are reasonable but I would like to have this done by July 1st if possible July 10th at the latest so so then I've got it for the summer and this is a lovely linen cotton blend really nice um, be a fun fun dress to wear in the summer really flary so looking forward to finally getting that cut up and starting to sew so I really do love sitting down at the machine it's just trying to carve out the time to do it so that was material girl and uh, yay, my dress See, I told you I'd wear it and it's not just against me it's actually on me so this is this is exciting um, I did get to the hem last night it took forever um, They look good on dresses, but I don't like doing them. So anyway, so I'm really excited about that. So time to move on, and I'm gonna talk about It's a Sockness and my favorite things. And I'm putting them together this week because I have no new projects, no new socks on the needles, which is very strange for me because I usually at least have one going so that I can take it to work but I had something else come up that I worked on at work instead but I'm going to talk about my next um, sock project so I did show this last week and this is La Belle et la Bête by Mustache Yarns and this was part of the um, oh my brain is eluding me for a moment the little skein in the big wool they had um, kits and um, so this was the yarn from one of the 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 Beauty and the Beast kit and so it's two separate skeins and I'm going to show those to you and I'm trying to decide which color to do next so these will be my next socks it's just a matter of which color I'm going to start with and so there are two mini skeins inside the big skein. So there is the pink beauty and there is the blue and green and brown La Bette. So La Belle et La Bette. And um, so I'm just trying to decide which side to start with. So um, I haven't figured that one out yet. And if that's my worst problem, that's not too bad. So anyway, what I probably will do, because this will be helpful for second socks. Oh my gosh, this is so soft. Um, this will be helpful for second sock syndrome. Um, if I do one and then do the other, or vice versa, um, I have another set of this because I don't like wearing odd socks. And But I can if I want to. That's the nice thing about these ones. So if I do one and then this one, it's sort of not really like second sock syndrome because you're doing two separate socks and then if I grab the second uh, skein and do the same thing then it's all good so anyway so this is what will be going on my sock needles very very soon um, maybe and well I'm going to do some knitting mon some monogamous knitting right for this week until I finish my project and that's when I could put these on the needles. I did not do a good job of putting this back on. Anyway, so that was It's a Sockness and my favorite things. Now, this past week, instead of working on a sock, I worked on a garment. It's a very small garment, but it took me a very long time. And I put this piece of paper under because I want you to see the lace pattern that is under it. It's still damp because I finished it last night and I blocked it so it's a little bit damp. So one of my co-workers is having a baby and I believe uh, the baby is due in July. It's going to be a little girl and I made 
a sprout lip dress. So, um, and this is in Diversion 100% Bamboo. So there's the, the ball band. And so it's 100% Bamboo. And it's in the Purple Pearl colorway. So the Purple Pearl is a yarn shop that is in Toronto. And for those of you who saw the movie, um, so in Canada and the US, it was called the F word. Mm, yes. And then in overseas, it was called um, something else. I'll have to figure out what it was called. And uh, so they filmed one of the scenes in the Purple Pearl. So, um, and of course the name eludes me. It had Daniel Radcliffe from Harry Potter in it. And uh, so lots of beautiful views of Toronto in, were featured as well. So anyway, um, so this is the Purple Pearl colorway and it is beautiful. Like the, just the, the little shifts of, of color. There's like little blue, like really reminding me of violets and, and uh, really pretty. And at the bottom there's a, a little lace section as well. Let me grab that piece of paper. Um, so you can see what the, the lace section looks like. So at the bottom it's lace and then a, a beautiful scalloped trim. As I said, it's still a little bit damp because I washed it very late last night and it was not dry. And it has this beautiful little peekaboo um, back. And you might notice, see, I had one leftover button that I used on this dress. So, um, and then the sleeves also have the little scalloped trim as well. So it is bamboo, so it is really quite stretchy. This is the zero to six month size. I, I did go to my coworker and I said I wanted to make a dress for her baby and I asked what size she wanted. Um, <laughs> the bamboo, I guess, stretches, so maybe it'll be good for longer than it might normally. So anyway, so that is the Sprout Lip Dress by uh, Tannis Lavalle. I believe that's how you pronounce her last name from Tennis Fiber Arts and um, I've, this is the third time I've done this dress and um, it's it's usually quite quite simple um, I had I was working on it at work so when things were going on and I was distracted um, there might be a couple of um, design features in this and normally I'm a perfectionist and I get rid of those design features but I was in too much of a rush and it was actually quite a challenge working with the bamboo yarn and I was using my Addies because it was done on a 3.25 um, millimeter 16 inch um, circular needle and so I had some things jump off way up here so there's a couple of little issues with the lace and people were talking to me while I was knitting and I'm not so good with that so it's fine if you're doing socks but when you're doing lace not as easy. So anyway, this will be gifted for a shower um, this week. So it had to jump the queue over the other project that I've been working on and need to get finished like super quick. So anyway, finished object, finished object, dresses, yay. Uh, doesn't happen very often. So garments are usually not my thing. So not that I don't want to do them. It's just, I never get around to them. I have a list of all these ones that I want to do. And, um, and I've added to it and I bought yarn for it too, um, but uh, eventually, I will get to it eventually. And that's it's sort of like Rome wasn't built in a day. So the other thing that is on my needles right now is the Shawl Society 2.2, which will be released on Thursday. So I better get knitting and get this beautiful, beautiful shawl off my needles, blocked, photographed by Thursday because the release date for the Shawl Society 2.2 is Thursday. I don't know the name and I'm excited to find out what it is though. So I'm using the purple um, dye for yarn Tussa Silk Lace for that one. I showed that on the podcast. It's a sort of like a mulberry purple, I guess. Um, I'm not sure if mulberry, it's, it's a, a dusty, dusty kind of purple. And so I will be 
working away this week to get that off the needles and uh, all ready so that it can go out with the release. Um, so Helen, I haven't found any problems yet. So if you're watching, uh, <laughs> I usually I'll send her an email. I haven't seen any, it's, it's a beautiful pattern. So, and things seem to be going well. Um, knock on wood. Anyway, uh, that's what I've been working on. So release date this Thursday. And if you were working on Fairy Hill and you've still got it on the needles or you finished but you haven't photographed and, and put it in the finished object thread on the Curious Handmade um, Ravelry thread, do so by the end of the month if you want to, pri if you want to be eligible for a prize. So um, I think that uh, Helen will likely be drawing for that on June 1st. I think she records her podcasts on Thursdays. So make sure you get it in there by May 31st. And uh, good luck for um, winning a prize. And, uh, the, and the, fairy the fairy hill was oh, so pretty. So this one's going to be pretty too. So there, uh, I have no doubt that, uh, and I've seen a little tiny bit of a peek when I was trying to choose yarn at another shawl. So, and it's going to be pretty too. So uh, definitely for subscribers of the Shawl Society, you've got lots to look forward to. And we're only, you know, at this point, one officially in. So um, really exciting there. So, so that is my um, It's a Softness and My Favorite Things segment. And it is time to move on to brown paper packages. And I'm actually going to show something I got last week, but only open today because I had so much last week. I thought I'm going to save something for, for next week. And that is my making magazine, my dots. So this is this year's um, spring, spring summer edition. It's very blue, which I love blue. Blue is my favorite color, although it's so strange because you'd think that maybe I'd knit more things in blue, but if you look through, um, blue is very far and few between. I guess maybe because I wear a lot of blue and black, I like to have the pops of color in the other, like in accessories. So I tend to use a lot of bright, bright colors, but just blue is my favorite. So there are some lovely things. I'm just going to show a few from the, the magazine. So if you don't want to see, look away. Um, so the theme of this one is dots. And I love this. So stolen. It's got these just little beautiful um, dots in the, in the scarf, stole, shawl, um, wrap. It's called the Awa 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 Wrap, A W A hyphen A W A Wrap. So there it is. There, there's all the information. That'll save me having to do it later. And um, yeah, so just really, really beautiful there. And um, there's a lovely cardigan, and this is the Hope cardigan. So there's the photo, and it's got like a lovely sleeve detail on it as well. And, oh, I like this one. This is called the Smattering Wrap. And it's just sort of a fun crochet. Great, God, I love the blues. The blues and the whites, always classic. Kanoko socks. I have to make these. So there's the information. And this is what they look like. Aren't they absolutely adorable? And blue and white, which you can never go wrong with blue and white. And um, there was another thing. Oh, this is too cute, too. This one is called Little Giraffe. Oh, he's so cute, and he's got little dots on him as well. So that's Susan B. Anderson, who makes the most beautiful toys, uh, knit-up toys. But I did see something that I thought was really quite cute that I might like to sew. And of course, I've probably gone by it. Um, and it's a little wallet. And um, I'll just try and show, here we go. I'll just try and show the top so that I'm not giving any pattern information away. But it's like a little um, minimalist wallet by Anna Graham. And um, just a really cute little thing to take out and about. And uh, so I might like to try and make that in the summer. 
and uh, I think I need one of these for my sewing pin cushion. So, and then on the very back, they have several of the pin cushions as well. So, anyway, this is Making Magazine, which is now um, being delivered, and I imagine out in shops as well. So, something kind of nice, pretty to to look at and and put in your collection of magazines and books and things like that if you if you are so inclined so as I said I got that last week but um, held on to it until this week so I did also get a couple more packages this week <sighs> hedgerow yarns every time I get something from Jane of hedgerow yarns I gush and today is not going to be any different because Jane's yarns are beautiful her packaging is beautiful um, Jane watches the podcast Hi, Jane and um, had a little bit of an injury so I hope I hope it's healing and, and getting better I know I've sent you a couple messages on Instagram but even with that injury she still has the amazing ability to dye these beautiful yarns and wrap them up beautifully and get them to the post office to bring happiness to all of us. So she's in absolute agony or was in absolute agony and is healing now I'm hoping. Um, but still gets this beautiful stuff out to us and does so in just oh such 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 beauty. So um, she came up with this colorway and it's called Menagerie and I got um, two of them because uh, it's on the Merino singles base and um, I saw it and I thought when I saw it on Instagram it was I have to get that and I set my alarm no sparkly polish you know it was I was going in for this and um, and I got two so I was very happy about that and this is Menagerie it is Merino singles which is 100% superwash Merino but it's um, 365 meters so that's why I got two and it is just beautiful glorious speckles and just bright pops of pink and oh, lots of little bits of green in there just look at, oh so nice and squishy and oh look at lovely <sighs> And of course it came beautifully packaged and with some tea and made me so happy to open it so um, so thank you Jane and so this is menagerie and after I because uh, I bought it checked out went back because that's my my downfall is going back I saw kimono and um, in some ways I would like to say it's very similar but also very different so same but different uh, so this is the menagerie and I'll make sure I've got the correct base and this is the kimono so sort of similar in the makeup but just the this I guess I like to think of this as a little bit more adult and this is a little bit more um, youthful fresh you know with all the pops of neon but this one so this is kimono and this is also on the merino singles and um hold on gotta pause okay off the phone my ear is really red from having a conversation but uh anyway back to hedgerow so i had shown my menagerie and now i'm going to show kimono and um of course, I'm trying to remember, what did I just say before I had a conversation with somebody for a very long time? So uh, the kimono is much more muted colors than the menagerie, but I love them both. And uh, so I got this on the regular merino singles in the kimono. Turn it this way. And uh, so 100% super wash, 365 meters, and uh, look at these beautiful little bits of gorgeous, gorgeous color, glorious. And I also got it on the silky singles base, and this is this is the special, the special one. It's got the lovely little clip and the stitch marker that Jane always puts on one of the the beautiful skeins. And this one's got some glorious, look at that, oh, 
peeking out there. Look at these beautiful, beautiful colors. Oh, so beautiful. And um, so this is kimono on silky singles, and this is 70% superwash, 30% silk, and 400 meters for this skein. So, so soft. Um, so I was thinking what I might make with this one is a pebble beach shawl. I have made a few pebble beach shawls and gifted them, um, but I need to make myself one. So um, maybe this one, although it would make a beautiful, <laughs> I'm, think I'm thinking of, of someone um, that uh, uh, as a gift I might that, that would make a beautiful pebble beach as another gift, but I want it too, so oh, it's always so so hard when you sort of go, this would be perfect for this person, but it would also be perfect for me. Um, we'll see. I've got, I've got lots of yarn. Anyway, so um, we'll figure out whether I get it or someone else gets it. So, um, nice. And also in the mail, okay, spoiler alert, spoiler alert. Cover the ears, cover the eyes if you do not want to see. Um, and uh, so, and it's a Nora George spoiler alert. So the Mrs. Weasley, yeah, Mrs. Weasley's Knit Club spoiler. Okay, it's out there. Right, good. Okay, so I did show this a couple of weeks ago, although it was in the crinkly bag, and I've taken it out of the bag, and I mispronounced it last time. I had said uh, Felix Felicia, but it's actually. Felix Felicis, um, and I'm probably mispronouncing. So this is the Nora George, um, Mrs. Weasley's Knit Club round one, uh, sorry, 4.1. And this is the Felix Felicis, and it's got some beautiful, beautiful colors. And the Nora George, uh, Mrs. Weasley's Knit Club, they can either be used as singles on their own or they can be combined. So. That was one that came a couple of weeks ago. I think this was April. I think it's April, May, June. And if it's not, it's then May, June, July. But I think it's April, May, June. So I think this is April. And then May. So spoiler, if you don't have May and June yet, they both came together the other day. And this is Polyjuice Potion. And so lots of lovely, lovely yarn. So this is the... Mrs. Weasley's, Mrs. Weasley's Knit Club 4.2 Polyjuice Potion. So, fun, fun. And the June one, it's not quite June yet, is, and uh, it's the Veritas Serum. I hope I pronounced that properly. So let me try to see if I can, Veritas Serum, Veritas Serum. Truth Serum. Harry Potter Truth Serum. And so it is lovely. It's got a very creamy base with oranges and lots of lovely little speckles in there. And so all three can be knit up together or separately. So mix them up and around, move them around. So there we go. So the three this was the um, round four knit club trio, and I'm really hoping to get into round five. So, because um, I like them, they they make me happy, and uh, they're so fun. Uh, I love I love Nora George yarn, but um, especially when uh, it's got this lovely Harry Potter theme. So, so that was what was in my mailbox this week, and. Uh, there may have been two major, major updates this past week. So on Tuesday, there was the Viola update, and yes, I did buy more sock. And then on Friday was the Nora George update, and yes, I bought more yarn. Uh, <laughs> I need stuff to show in the podcast, right? That's how I can justify it to myself. Um, it's beautiful yarn to knit with, and... Uh, one day, when I retire, I will knit through it. I'm hoping. <laughs> I've got a lot of yarn. Anyway, so um, so I will, I'll be excited to, to share those when they arrive. And in the meantime, it is time for tea time. 
And so I have been slowly working on this and I was on the phone with, with my friend for quite a while and I took a sip just before. So this was the Coca Colada. I wasn't too sure um, about it because I don't really love coconuts. As it steeps and sits for a while because I've left the bag in, I know, you're not supposed to, but I just find with the David's ones, it just gives it a little bit more flavor. Um, it's actually much, much nicer, cooler, and um, sitting for a very long time. So if I were to make a, an iced tea with it, it would be lovely. Um, so I just wanted to show you a few things. So on, I guess, Tuesday or Wednesday, I can't remember which day this week, um, when I received my, I think it was Tuesday, when I received the hedgerow in the the mail, um, Jane had put a sweet rhubarb of the Taylors of Harrogate, and I talked about this one last week, I have the, the boxes, but I will gladly take any extras of these because they are yummy. And I really, I, I guess when I talked about it, I hadn't tried the sweet rhubarb yet, or I didn't know I had tried it, and because uh, my husband had made some iced and gave me some, and I, uh, anyway, I digress. Um, sweet rhubarb, really, really nice. So I did like that, it's really nice cold as well. I showed this one last week, the sour cherry, and I thought I was gonna love this. It has licorice in it. I do not like licorice. And I gave it a try. I even let it cool down. It was worse when it cooled down because then I could really taste the licorice. Um, my husband loves licorice, so the two boxes of sour cherry that I had bought, he gets to have those. And I will um, stick to the sweet rhubarb and the rose lemonade, because I I adore those ones. But licorice, mm, too bad, but pretty color here. So, and then the other thing I wanted to talk about during tea time was, um, so today I'm drinking the Coca Colada, and uh, so that's David's tea, and it just came in one of these little iced tea uh, pouches. You can use it for hot tea too, I just use a smaller amount, but this is enough for the perfect iced tea pitcher apparently, so. Um, so this is the Coco Colada, which is what I'm drinking. And so David's, if you're in um, Canada or the U.S., uh, there are locations throughout Canada and the U.S., and then they have the online shop. Um, so they sell these in little little bags, and I think they're um, one for five dollars Canadian, three for twelve dollars Canadian, or six. Oops, my battery's getting low again or six for 20. So I have the Coco Colada, which I am actually starting to like a little bit. Um, let's save that one till later. I'm not sure what I'm gonna think of this one. My husband picked some of these up for me. So uh, this is the Rainbow Sherbert. Uh, this is the one I'm sort of a little bit leery of. Um, maybe I'll love it, but it's sort of, it's more like, I tried their cotton candy a couple of years ago. I didn't like that one. So I have a feeling it'll be similar to that. Um, I also have Caribbean Crush in that. I dropped the Blackberry one. So this is the Blackberry Blizzard. And then this is the one, I tried this one earlier this year and it's a green tea. Um, it is Grapefruit Granita. And um, just double checking the, that I've got the, that right. Um, so it's a green tea and it does have that grapefruit taste. So um, just a few things that I'm gonna be trying over the next couple of weeks just to, to try some different flavors and see if there's any others that are more on the um, the regular everyday David's list that I might want to keep um, stocked in my house so and that's tea time okay time to get serious I have had something happen to me this year that has never ever happened before. I am becoming a slave to my socks. I now love my socks so much that I want to wear them every single day of the year. And I've got, you know, my socks on rotation, you know, I throw them, you know, I'm, I'm taking really good care of them. They're just so comfy and squishy and warm. <sighs> I love them. I want to wear them all the time. And where it used to be, as soon as April 1st hit, like I didn't care if there was an inch of snow on the ground. It was April 1st. All socks came off. You know, and, and they stayed off until 
sometimes into, into December. Sometimes I'd have to give in a little bit earlier in, in March, but you know, it was bare feet. It was a barefoot bonanza. And now I'm addicted to wearing my socks that I think I might even wear them into August. I might have to make the ultimate sock faux pas. I might have to do, I know, I know, I might have to do socks with sandals because I love my socks that much. Yesterday, my son wore the brown pair of socks that I showed last week. He wore them with shorts, so it's not just me. I mean, my socks are amazing. Today, as I'm wearing this dress, I have my apple blossom socks on. My feet get cold still, but I just want to wear them all the time. And I don't care what people think because I love my socks. You know, I'm wearing them with capri pants. I'm wearing them with boots. I'm wearing them with my, you know, regular shoes. I haven't quite gotten to the wearing them with Birkenstocks yet or the wearing them with any other. Uh, I don't think I could do it with flip flops just because, you know, I'd have to make those special socks with toe, like little, the big toe thing in it. And I'm not sure I want to do that. Um, but I am now a slave to my socks. Does anyone else feel that way? Or is it just me? <sighs> They're that nice. And that's the true confession for this week. Thank you so much for joining me on today's podcast. I hope that you've had a nice relax and that you are ready for your week ahead. I know I've got a really busy one ahead of me. So uh, thank you for taking the time to sit down with me. And uh, I hope you got a, a good chunk of your knitting done. And uh, I look forward to seeing you next week when I will have a Shawl Society 2.2 finished object to share with you. And who else knows what I'll have for next week? It's, uh, you never know what the week brings. So have a wonderful week and uh, we will see you next week. Bye. Total faux pas party. Socks with pants, socks with shorts, socks with dresses, socks with skirts, socks with trench coats, socks with gaucho pants, socks with sandals, socks with heels. The list is endless. Socks, socks, socks. Hand knit socks.